This technology is not one that is going to leave financial services unscathed. There are going to be a lot of business models that disappear as a result of the automation of trust. And that is something that you can bury your head in the sand about, but that's not going to do you any good. Many of us will know blockchain as the technology that underpins Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. But really what it is, is a, is, is, is a protocol or a way to record uh, transactions uh, using a complex algorithm and some encryption uh, that, that results in the transactions being a trusted, irrevocable, uh, and, and, um, and effectively available to everyone uh, who would want to know about that transaction. So you can create an environment where uh, transactions get recorded, stored using this technology, um, where everyone who needs to know knows about the transaction, eliminating the need for reconciliation, for amendments. Uh, because we all have the same view of those transactions, we don't all have to keep separate databases. So it really is a really powerful way to keep track of things. Uh, you can think of Bitcoin as the mother of blockchain technology. And so it had the first working implementation of a blockchain that the world has seen. And that blockchain was distributed, so uh, uh, shared by a number of entities, all recording the information uh, therein, uh, cryptographically secured. So that's the way in which the transactions are getting verified and the groups of transactions are getting added um, onto the blockchain. And the third aspect of that was immutable. So once you added transactions to Bitcoin's blockchain, you can erase them. As a shared database, it's highly redundant, which means that you know if servers fail or there's a catastrophe somewhere, we have backups of the data. It's immutable, which means that no party in the, uh, on the blockchain can change any aspect of the chain. So this reduces fraud. Um, and then also it's self-repairing. So if for some reason your system became corrupt, well, once you, you know, mechanically fix your system, it will self-repair on the network. Most of the major um, global banks, for example, all have innovation labs focused specifically on blockchain. From a, a services perspective, I think there are some really interesting evolutions happening in things like syndicated loans or trade finance. Um, equities even has um, the beginnings of blockchain-based equities trading. There's some um, relatively large-scale investment and, and large, well-known firms looking at that. Um, custody, specifically as well, is being looked at very broadly um, as a potential disruption um, based on blockchain technology. We have seen many different types of innovation uh, on blockchain across the financial sector industry today. We've, from capital markets use cases to core banking platforms being created off of the blockchain to even loyalty. The most relevant one, at least from a market traction perspective, has been cross-border settlement. And the idea that you can create a global network through blockchain that is highly cost efficient um, and potentially transparent at the same time. And the very interesting item with some of these models um, is the ability to be able to inject foreign exchange market making capability directly into the blockchain, therefore driving down the cost even further and providing value to consumers. More widely in banking, it's being used in spaces like remittances. It's a, it's a great tool for, for supporting the remittance of small amounts of money uh, very quickly at very low cost and friction. Uh, insurance companies are looking at it at ways to streamline uh, their, their sort of claims processes. Uh, it'll streamline complex things like, uh, like managing loan syndication and trade finance, which is a very finicky process requiring lots of uh, interactions and, 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 and kind of uh, execution steps, which can easily or more, more effectively be put on blockchain. In general, I think uh, US-based regulators are sort of pro-innovation, including innovations in financial technology. And although we have many different regulatory agencies that uh, oversee the financial system, most of them have at this point expressed um, a lot of, uh, some to a lot of interest in the potential benefits of distributed ledger technology and making the financial system not only faster and more efficient and cheaper, but also safer and also essentially more compliant. What we're seeing in the last uh, year, at least 2016, 
is the idea where incumbents are no longer going at it alone, and as well as startups are no longer going at it alone. There's tremendous value in driving partnerships together. Partnerships to drive both innovation, coming ideally from the startups, and um, scale that drawing from the incumbents. And this movement actually directly extends into the blockchain space. Um, and so we're seeing large institutions, traditional institutions, starting to partner with all those different startups and even consortiums in the blockchain space to really help drive that, that new value and being able to bring, bring scale to the innovation and the, um, the, the wonderful ideas that are being generated from entrepreneurs as they can drive new values and help re-engineer processes um, across the industry. One benefit potentially of distributed ledger technologies is making data more available to more parties in a more consistent, more simplified manner and in a way that doesn't require parties to reconcile a bunch of different databases together. So from the regulator's perspective, it does provide them with that sort of bird's eye view of the financial system maybe as a whole and maybe allows them to more easily drill deep into particular entities or particular industries in a way that is more useful for their um, oversight purposes for systemic risk, for compliance with um, more particular requirements, um, and for, for example, counterparty risk to see who owes what to who. I think in the near term, there are ways we can use it to streamline our own processes around reconciliation, around uh, managing uh, entitlements, removes ads and changes uh, to securities, terms and conditions, uh, potentially helping eliminate reconciliations in the clearing and depository process. Uh, perhaps making proxy voting much easier so that we can make sure that the people who own the shares are actually the ones who vote the shares. There's a whole set of spaces like that. Um, we could use it to facilitate private markets and there are firms that, that do that already. Um, so there's a lot of things I think that we can bring to bear and in fact are thinking about as we look at our own strategies. There are, there are three categories that I think about when um, it comes to challenges with blockchain in today's uh, state. The first one being the balance between data privacy and transparency. So making sure that the parties transacting have the proper transparency into the action that's happening across the parties, but as well as making sure, you know, beyond them that the proper privacy and their data is being protected on the blockchain itself. The second one is legal and regulatory um, topics. Um, specifically around anti-money laundering and know your customer and making sure that the endpoints that the governments or whatever central bodies are able to um, able to monitor and you know to some extent control who's transacting from one point to another and last but not least security security absolutely has been designed from within the blockchain to make sure that it is resilient and hopefully impossible to attack the blockchain because of the amount of value that's being transferred back and forth on the blockchain. I think there are a couple of primary challenges um, to, to implementation, I call it, and, uh, two main ones that I focus on on a regular basis. One bluntly is education. Um, I, the WSBA specifically, but broadly within the industry is focused on how do we get the knowledge needed across technology and operations and product and uh, even executive strategy that make blockchain um, viable for the future of financial industries and help the industry understand where it makes the most sense. I think that there's a, a varied level of understanding between different players in the ecosystem and within those players between senior management, the business and the technology functions and there still needs to be more education, more consensus building, more understanding of the true power of this before we'll truly be able to scale it. I think the other challenge is what, what I would call broadly integration. These systems that have been running in financial services firms, banks, broker dealers, hedge funds, on and on, um, have been around for a while. And they do what they do. So the challenge becomes what are those integration points over time for the financial services industry that make the most economic sense? We need the, the, the significant players in our, in our ecosystem to be able to make the investments and the changes they need to make to their underlying processes and the way they think about transactions and the way they think about their customer interactions to make this work. You know, our, our customers spend billions of dollars uh, every year on, on, on their technology budgets, on building, on maintaining the technologies they have, on adapting them to deal with regulation, on adapting them to deal uh, with lots of their other imperatives, and to layer this on top uh, and then to look for the investments that you'll truly need to be able to scale this thing, I think is going to take some time. But with all these issues, um, blockchain is still in its nascent state. Um, there's a lot of momentum being generated on blockchain, 
uh, in, it's, in the last four years alone, there's been over, close to about a billion dollars of investments in blockchain, 50% of which has been just in the last, 20, in the last year, 2015, representing a year-over-year -year growth of 46%. So with that said, there's a tremendous amount of focus on solving some of these challenges, and it's just a matter of time before they're solved for, and then we actually truly start to unlock the value potential of blockchain. One of the most promising parts of this technology um, is pretty fundamental to who we are as human beings. And that is when you go back to how we evolved um, and, and the beginning of uh, uh, human societies, we operated in a peer-to-peer hunter-gatherer culture where we transacted for things and there were debits and credits depending on who gave who what. Uh, but as our um, societies expanded, especially with the agricultural revolution. Uh, the populations got so big that we needed the introduction of middlemen uh, because the middlemen facilitated trust. I think this is really exciting because right now most workflows are basically within an organization. You have these like intra-organization workflows and then you have these like really hard edges to kind of cross to another organization. And with blockchain, we're gonna kind of see the seamless workflow just go end to end. What really excites me about blockchain is the potential to start integrating industries together in a world of convergence. For example, we can start integrating financial services and telecommunications, or even to some extent, capital markets and fine art and collectibles. This is what I like to call like a cohesive network with very low friction. Now, with blockchain, what we could potentially have is the economic automation of middlemen, or the middlemen become code. And in such a big world with a global population that's around seven and a half billion people, this can get really profound in terms of taking us back to a hunter-gatherer form of P2P commerce, where I don't necessarily need a middleman scraping off value between me and who I'm trying to transact with. I actually just transact directly with the person I need to transact with, and I have trust in the mathematics of the system without necessarily needing to know the person who I'm transacting with. So it makes the world both hyper-local and hyper-global at the same time. I don't think financial services will, there will be a big bang event where we'll all wake up one day and everything is done on a blockchain. But blockchain will seep into what I call the fabric of financial markets over time. There'll be a point years down the road where blockchain is powering things um, behind the scenes and it simply is there. Mm -hmm.